Hi YouTube, today is the last day of the 2016, which by the way was a very good year for me. And that year I finished the E. coli superbug infection after nine months of battling. I got my sponsor, which uh, was very generous when he was generous. Now he's broke as well. <laughs> and um, so for me it was excellent year. So this is update. Well, many people in Krati, when they see me, they wonder why I carry uh, this uh, stick uh, in my bag. Mostly, mostly I carry it on my back, sometimes in front, and uh, very rarely I'm taking it out. There's got to be really some reason for it, and it was only in two or three occasions here in uh, four months, and I never used it. It was simply deterrence. So, the reason, this, I would put it like this: why and how. So first, important is to explain you how uh, <laughs> that how is that i'm sorry to say this but i am to a certain degree the mind control uh, that means i managed to solve my initial mind control we all suffer from uh, to the great deal and this is the reason how i'm carrying it i simply can be non-conformist in intelligent in a legal way this is how okay this is the very first thing. Technically how it's in my back. <laughs> uh, this is very easy part. So the why is I have many reasons. I normally start with the reason number four, which means uh, I'm carrying it because my life improved tremendously. When I start to carry it, I feel so much better, so much better. And it costed me only $1.25. They've been selling them. Well, not with this duct tape, I put it uh, like this as, you know, for fun when I was high and I also try to hide the metal ending here it's not nice to see it so it has metal ending yeah <laughs> it's not only bamboo stick so I paid it 5,000 real so reason for I feel much better and the reason why I feel much better is I feel so much incredibly safer first reason why why I bought it and this was in Banlung in Banlung they've been selling it for dogs people normally have these sticks everywhere normally behind doors but also like they carry in cars and so on. So dogs are an incredibly big problem in Ratanakiri, in this rural part of Cambodia. You have these uh, stray dogs everywhere. They form uh, street uh, packs and then they control whole street and uh, you have to feed them in order to pass through the street. They can be aggressive, they can, they can jump on you, they can bite you and so on. So why wake up call for me was when I was meditating by the lake in Banlung and I opened my heart chakra and I felt the, the, the love to the lake, to the earth, and I really had one of those beautiful meditations, you know, by the tree, by the lake, peaceful, and intuition started to scream, danger, 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 I was ignoring it, I looked left, there was nothing, I looked right, and there was a pack of um, about seven dogs uh, r uh, rushing towards me, I felt incredible stress, but I picked up some branch and charged uh, to them to break the pack, because you need to charge them to break the pack, and they fucked off and and this was like one of those really wake up calls when I simply decided okay no more bullshit uh, and I had other episodes but really serious episodes with dogs and I really needed something like this and I didn't have it and I was saved by the other people and my small pocket knife I was waving <sighs> so you know dogs are huge huge fucking problem in this uh, country um, second problem are the drunk uh, male uh, groups which practice bog. Bog is a cultural thing in Cambodia, which means if you have a group of males, uh, they're gonna do harassment to other people uh, in order to uh, have the plus feeling of feeling of the bond among themselves. This is something very normal. They will like throw down in the restaurant, fuck off white and so on. This is normal. They would uh, do the same thing on the street, uh, chok, uh, parang, pa and so on. And uh, they can do. They can be dangerous, physically dangerous, when it's so-called monkey time. This is uh, when they're really drunk. And it's every day. Uh, they start drinking six o'clock. Uh, midnight is the finishing time. But around 9, 10 p.m., you have uh, lots of these drunk groups, and it's normal in this country that you have males uh, sitting on a floor in park by the street, and you know, and simply uh, with a box of beer, just uh, drinking. And they don't need much to to get drunk and aggressive or unpleasant. So I had a number of episodes with these people as well and uh, normally they start with Nia Kampuchea, this is our country, you farang, fuck off and then uh, I would uh, simply put my 
my stick on my on my shoulder and say, my perai, no problem, chai, calm down, chai, calm down. And if they advance to my camera or to me or to my position, then I would use it. And that's a bullshit scenario for me. Because Khmer's, they can get away with uh, violence and murder even. But you as a white guy in the country, you can't, you know. That's how it is. It's not racist society. They simply don't have terms for racism and corruption. It's simply a way of life. You understand that? You have to understand that. So, this is the second reason. And the um, third reason is, well, this is not a big problem in Krati. This was a problem in Phnom Penh. Uh, you have those professional back snatchers, uh, two or three guys on a scooter. They can either dismantle and attack you physically, or they can pick up your bag from a scooter, or combination of works. Uh, they are uh, they are dangerous, but uh, I had a, also a situation with them. I uh, fought them off with a teaser, and uh, and in a couple of more occasions I presented a knife, and so they went back to the scooter and so on. I was living six months in Wat Phnom, which is the area where they operate, and after 10 o'clock. So, Another problem uh, with my lifestyle is I'm a targeted individual. That means if I'm getting rad radiated, microwaved in my house, it can be any time of the day. It can be 10 p.m., midnight, 2 a.m. I absolutely must leave house because if it's really high radiation, I, I can't stay. You have like four different stages. For it. First, it's hot, then it's burning from one side. Uh, then you notice that your head is cooking, you, you can't uh, think straight. That's why I have, of course, problem with the limb nodes and you know, and everything. And uh, second, last phase is when your heart is uh, pumping very, very uh, hard, and you're sweating, of course. And then you really must leave because it's uh, very dangerous for you. That can also cause a heart attack. But I have excellent heart. Every doctor said that. And uh, and then when I'm out, then of course I'm exposed to the transvestites. Uh, they even in Krati the opera they can be aggressive in a group. Uh, drunk groups, you have also homeless uh, people on drugs and uh, drunk people and uh, of course you have this simply cultural thing that uh, they don't see anything wrong in in attacking. Um, for example, according to Al Jazeera one on one, uh, one in four uh, Khmer men uh, uh, raped a woman in a life and about 5% of them either done a group rape or are participating in that, they call it bog which is, you know, having a fun for free. Abloy, but you wanna fuck, you don't have money, you wanna fuck, you do that. It's okay, my perai, for them, not for the women, of course. So I'm just telling you how things are here. So things can very easily escalate. And um, and uh, this is the reason why I just, uh, after one, after like certain number of harassments in Southeast Asia, I would say two digit number of uh, dog attacks, serious dog attacks are out of those two very serious ones. And, uh, three attempts on my property in Phnom Penh and quite a number of uh, s uh, classical st street bullshits and, and so on I simply decided to do that so why I in some reasons I carry it normally on my back and in some streets I really carry it on my front so I have a certain rule excuse me for this uh, my rule is uh, if I get attacked two times or more in certain area uh, or harassed uh, that means I will explain you I start to wear my bag in front so I'm wearing it only in two areas in Bangkok area in a notorious Bangkok and a neighboring Muslim community in Phnom Penh because I was harassed there of course <laughs> they attack a white guy there every day physically and uh, I was harassed here in Kratin market so how it goes if somebody is simply passing by me and hits me once and people do that uh, kids can hit you with a fist in, 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 in like in your arm or in your in your belly and it's like a fun for Khmer not for you and or or they when you uh, trying to pay beggars can come sneak around and pull out the money okay this is also been doing a couple of occasions here or um, or gay gay people can like touch you as well this was also happening uh, visibly gay people coming and <laughs> touching you know so all these things been happening here, just in Krati speaking. Um, and uh, the, if that is happening, then if street is unsafe, if I have if I had more than two attacks, then I go with my bag in front because I have to prepare, I have to protect my bag. And also I have to uh, be prepared for pulling out stick very quickly and protecting my stick because uh, they, they, of course, in a couple of occasions, they try to steal a stick for a fun and so on. So. 
uh, this is the rule and uh, I'm I'm not a paranoid guy I'm not gonna put my bag immediately in the front if uh, just one kid hit me or beggar try to pull out a bill but if that happens two times then it's alarming sign so that was it um, I'm carrying it um, not because I want it I'm I was of course not carrying it in Europe in Croatia I didn't need it that, there but I it, it, it got dangerous in my neighborhood uh, thanks to the increase of the gypsy natality so it got dangerous and in, in one phase I was carrying a machete in my backpack because I simply didn't want to be attacked again I was of course attacked many times by gypsies as many other people in my neighborhood this is a very normal thing uh, but you you can't talk about these things because of course if you're white and you're complaining about racial attacks you are the one who's racist right that's how it goes white means racist so I know that people gonna interpret this as a white guy bullshitting and so on which is normal hating white guy is legit I understand that and that also explains why I have to carry this fucking stick on me and um, I mean in, in other in a better world I wouldn't so okay uh, what very logical argument is how come that other people are not carrying it that's a very good question well answer number one would be they're simply mind controlled they don't even carry umbrellas here because other people don't carry umbrellas so uh, people, people simply confirm with the majority, but don't be that naive. They carry shitloads of stuff on them, uh, hidden. Uh, many police officers who are simply not in duty, they will carry their guns on them. Uh, many of them have Kalashnikovs in their houses. Many of them have uh, something in a scooter, a knife or something. So people are armed. armed. Don't worry about this. Uh, machetes are around. Simply they're not showing it. And me, I just... Uh, simply can't afford myself any more bullshit because you have to understand also uh, my circumstances the next good hospital is six hours away with uh, with the bus i have totally fake hospital here which is uh, and i will show you again which is uh, pumping ten dollar uh, water into the veins of people you have this blue blue cross sign there but uh, maybe maybe you see some poor victims of that mind control essentially so i just uh, oh look yeah and i have Khmer neighbors which are of course always and always and never stopped um, throwing their rags and uh... so yeah you have the idea uh it's a little bit urbanized in there, there are you know of course old houses and new houses but uh, it's the third world society right it's that's how it is and we don't have really medical care and you have to pay for it dearly so very practical thing which again for you it's a bullshit and nothing for me it's a life or death if a dog bites me i'm supposed to pay maybe up to one thousand dollars just for fees in a hospital for rabies and infection prevention okay who's gonna pay that you youtube user <laughs> youtube viewer me who simply don't have it at this moment or dog maybe i'm gonna ask the dog excuse me mr dog can i pull out from your asshole a uh, one thousand dollars in ten bills or two thousand dollars easily so think about these terms when shit hits the fan who's gonna who's gonna protect me who's gonna pay my bills huh people who are judging me when i'm carrying it maybe dog maybe queen of england maybe pope francis is gonna do it because he's a good catholic no it's me and i have this responsibility for myself same as you have responsibility for yourself and this is why uh, if you simply feel unsafe and if you, if you feel unsafe then there got to be something what makes you feel unsafe then you know what better be armed uh, if you live in America maybe maybe you, you can get access to the gun for me it's absolutely impossible in many ways and um, just think of it Uh, $1.25 stick can be can be easily difference between life and death and you know you remember that footage when that uh, drug the uh, half naked guy was hanging out around me and started to advance well this is typical uh, this is typical harassment because uh, guys like him they don't understand the diplomatic nodes yeah, yeah they only understand deterrence and 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 this is unfortunate thing we live we live with animals okay most of the humans are animals especially when they're uh, on drugs and uh, and uh, 
drunk. And it, as you can see by the by the rag simply thrown away, these people don't really think way too much. They simply react. So you have to anticipate their reactions. You know, they, they're not gonna, st if they see me a white, okay, and it's four of them, five of them, six of them drunk, in their mind is simply, it, 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 they don't think, they just go. They just go, they just take stuff, they just hit you. And it's all fun, but it's not, it's not fun, okay? And that's why I'm carrying a stick, because it's not fun. <laughs>